show. Wayne Madsen of WayneMadsenReport.com joins us, also a correspondent for Infowars.com. And he has the exclusive article, Jeb Bush linked to drug cartels, money laundering, and the CIA. Well, yeah, his dad used to head up the CIA. And I'm going to put on screen El Paso Times, Business Insider, Chicago Tribune, when it turned out that the Los Zetas and Sinaloa drug cartel heads were really CIA agents, pled that in court, and were released in the last four years. So this has come out that Wachovia and Wells Fargo, that's Warren Buffett, were caught laundering $378 billion in drug money again four years ago and got a $111 million fine. They even owned and ran the aircraft with the drugs, and then those were connected to torture flights and rendition. Now, again, a lot of people say that he's a Nazi, they're a Nazi. With the Bushes, and I made a film about this 15 years ago, but it's now in the London Guardian. The Bushes, Prescott Bush, who was before you know Bush 41, he was the top Nazi agent in the U.S. at Brown Brother Harriman. And that's why they're so secretly rich, is that when the Nazi wealth collapsed, a lot of it was hidden in the U.S. and in Latin America. And you know who got the Nazi gold? These guys are some of the richest people in the world, by the way. And, 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 and so, I mean, I guess it pays. But whatever, Nazis, Hitler was on the cover of Time Magazine. He's a great guy in 1938. I'm not just demonizing the Bushes out of hand. I mean, they thought they were on the winning team. Uh, but we'll digress into that with Wayne Madsen. He's an expert on that subject as well. But, but Wayne, thank you for joining us. We're going to skip this network break to give you more time uh, here coming up in a few minutes. You, you, you're breaking so much big news. I want to fly you. Uh, on the campaign trail if you want. But I know you're in Florida part of the time to track Bush to really dig into this, but great job. Uh, suss out for people exactly the connections you were able to document. Well, I've, I discovered, and you know, a lot of this is new about the Bushes and their connection to the CIA and the drug uh, trafficking and money laundering. Uh, uh, Gary Webb uh, uh, pioneered uh, on this topic uh, back in the 1980s, as did Bob Parry. Uh, but uh, I discovered in the CIA archives a very interesting letter written on Texas Commerce Bank uh, letterhead, 1977, uh, from J.E. Bush. That's Jeb Bush. You know, Jeb isn't his name. That's an acronym. His name is John Ellis Bush. Anyway, it was written on Texas Commerce Bank letterhead. That's the bank that belongs to the James Baker family. Uh, to Robert Gambino, uh, the director of security for the CIA, thanking him for uh, his uh, indoctrination, security uh, indoctrination given to Jeb Bush in 1977 before he took off for two years to be the vice president, <coughs> excuse me, of um, Texas Commerce Bank in Caracas, Venezuela. When he was in Venezuela, of course, what was he doing there? Of course, he had connections, he made connections that would be very fortuitous uh, for the future with uh, the Cali and Medellin drug cartels in neighboring Colombia um, and uh, anti-Castro Cubans who were operating out of Venezuela. So when he leaves uh, Caracas with his Mexican wife um, and, and moves to Florida to join his dad's uh, 1980 presidential campaign, which was then against Ronald Reagan, uh, Reagan reluctantly picked this guy, uh, George H.W. Bush, as his vice presidential running mate at the 11th hour. All bets were, and Reagan wanted Gerald Ford to actually be his running mate. I think Reagan knew about the, the dirty business involving the Bushes, but Bush was forced on Reagan's ticket by uh, the moneyed people uh, out of New York, and uh, including William Casey, who later became the CIA director. And um, so Jeb Bush... Uh, after uh, his dad becomes vice president, uh, uh, is a meeting with all these Florida-based uh, bankers, uh, CIA assets. Uh, he's responsible or involved with a lot of the savings and loan collapses in Florida and elsewhere. Of course, that's how the CIA got, got a lot of its operating money, its slush fund money from these uh, 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 made the fail. And then we know from Terry Reid, the CIA pilot, who we can't get in touch with these days, he's been on many times, who, who wrote the book Compromise Clinton Bush and the CIA, he was there at MENA years later in the 80s watching all these famous Republicans and Democrats going and coming at the airport, and he looks in the C-130s and they're just full of cocaine. Yeah, that's true. And 
And, you know, one of the pilots uh, who was in and out of MENA was uh, Phil Marshall, the guy who they said killed himself and his two kids and the family dog out in California a couple of years ago. I flew out there to investigate that. If You know, if, if that was uh, suicide, I'm the Queen of England. Uh, Why do you think they killed him? Because he might have been involved in that or because he, he was a 9-11 truther investigating? Probably they feared the fact that he knew about the CIA and all their uh, operations from the time of MENA and the 1980s that he and being a, a pilot for 757 and 767, he was a great threat uh, to expose the 9-11 uh, incident. Uh, that's why they had to get rid of him. This guy was, I, I guess you could call him a man for all seasons when it came to exposing not only the CIA. And back he had, in, did he have a book was about to come out? I mean, why would he? It, yeah. Just like yeah, Gary yeah, Webb. He, he had written three books, one a, a novel about his time uh, flying people like Barry Seal around uh, with the CIA and the two others on uh, questioning the 9-11 official story. He was working on yet a third book about the 9-11, but the, the hard disk uh, uh, disappeared from his home. Uh, mm. and death. And we don't know. Uh, what became of that? The last I heard, it was in the it was in the computer lab of the Justice Department uh, of the state of California in Sacramento. Sure. Well, from my research, even pilots that play ball and think they're safe living in Hawaii or whatever, they end up just by the time you get old, they just drop by your house, poison you or kill you. Why would anybody want to work in these in these dirty operations knowing it's a death sentence? Well, I think if you talk uh, to a lot of these people that originally worked for the CIA. I think it was the, you know, the excitement uh, of flying for companies like Air America and Laos, uh, flying uh, down to Nicaragua and Colombia. Uh, but then again, then, you know, these guys soon found out in some cases they were transporting illegal narcotics, whether it was heroin out of the Golden Triangle in Southeast Asia or cocaine out of Colombia. And by the it's way, if you're a new listener, they had the Solicitor General for the CIA admit all this in 97 in hearings that you covered. We're talking about things that are admitted, and then still mainstream media will call us conspiracy theorists, you know, for saying that Washington's on the Potomac. I mean, we're talking about admitted facts here. You've just ferreted out more connections with a Jebby boy who isn't he really uh, George Herbert Walker's favorite? Yeah, and he's probably the more the most um, uh, sinister of the lot. I mean, George W. Bush uh, uh, was bad, but uh, you know he was kind of an, an ignoramus when it came, came came to what's going on around him. That's not the case with Jeb. Jeb fully knows what's going on. Uh, he's not a dummy, but he's extremely corrupt. So when you look uh, at the t a period of time before he uh, became governor of Florida, he's involved in all kinds of skanky real estate deals with uh, known uh, drug uh, uh, smugglers. Out well, of he's Miami. involved with African dictators, too. I mean, this guy's busy bee. Yeah. Oh, Nigerian scams. Uh, most of us laugh when we get those emails from Nigeria. Jeb Bush was actually involved in it with some of uh, these uh, uh, gangsters in Nigeria on a on a water uh, with a water company he was involved with. So the guy the guy is absolutely corrupt. Um and, uh, uh, you know, but he, he's, he keeps that Bush mystique going. Uh, this is a crime family. And what Jeb Bush did is he basically extended the Bush crime family's operations from Houston and Dallas uh, to, to Miami. And, um, and Florida became one, uh, like Texas uh, was and still is, I believe, uh, Bush uh, criminal uh, operating ground. Uh, he added Florida to the uh, to the mix. So this is this is Jeb Bush's real legacy. Uh, he was obviously a non-official cover CIA agent in Caracas. Uh, Gambino, who gave him his in briefing, uh, later joined the uh, 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 Bush Reagan campaign uh, in 1980, and Bush rewarded him with the head, being the head of the Selective Service System when Bush became president in 1989. Uh, so the, 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 here, here we have just another example of this Bush, uh, what I call the Bush crime family in action. And the mere fact that Jeb is on that stage uh, debating other Republican candidates for the nomination just shows the hubris of, of this Bush family.
when it comes to their role in America. It's obscene. I mean, I forget it was a senator said that the, the presidency's not a crown to be passed between two families. Let's shift gears out of your article that details this at Infowars.com. We'll get more into it in the next segment. And look at Hillary and and her, her, her emails. I mean, even if the Justice Department is controlled by them, it's bold that the FBI raided these, or is that to keep them from Congress? And what's the inside intel? Because you're up there on the Hill every week or so uh, on what's going to happen to Hillary. Are they planning to put her in or Jeb? I and mean, we know it's those two. We know her campaign manager went to Bilderberg. No other political manager was there. We think Jeb might have been. He was in Austria at the time, but we couldn't confirm it. So maybe Jeb and Hillary were both there, at least her manager. But, but, but it's admitted her manager was there. And so where is all that going and what's the poop on Trump? Well, I still believe that Hillary and Jeb are the odds on favorite to rest the nominations of both the respective parties because the money is is currently with them. Now, that may be changing a little bit. I know there's some elders in the Republican Party that are looking at John Kasich, who did very well in a debate and is probably the m m more electable of all of them on the Republican side. But $2 billion potentially in Hillary's war chest, $2 billion potentially in Jeb's war chest. This is going to be a $4 billion general election. I'm not even counting the primary here. It's an obscene amount of money that's going to be spent on getting, getting control of the Oval Office. As far as Donald Trump is concerned, I mean, I, I you know, everybody I talk to, uh, Democrats and Republicans, are just sitting back and laughing at the fact he's actually, in his own way, uh, making a, a, a mockery of, of a system that should be made a mockery of. Uh, he's, he said he, he owned half of the people on the stage uh, during the last debate in Cleveland. He, he's absolutely correct. I, I look at the Donald Trump, really, he's, a, he's kind of a billionaire version of Archie Bunker. Uh, as he's really, I mean, what he's saying is catching on uh, across the country uh, just like uh, back in 1972, there were these Archie Bunker for President bumper stickers and buttons popped up all over the country because people related to this fictional character played by Carol O'Connor on All in the Family. But I think, uh, once again, Trump, you, we know you need money to run uh, as an insurgent candidate, whether it's a, as a, in one of the two major parties or as an independent. Ross Perot showed that in 1992. Uh, and uh, I think we're in one of these election cycles where a Trump uh, is able to catch on because people are sick and tired of the system. Uh, well, sure, they're sick of the mealy mouth double talk, and that's why he's so refreshing. But separately from that, we know he's big buddies with the Clintons and the Bushes. He's talking about a third party run. I see him as a third party run, obviously hurting Jeb a lot more. The question is, in the Clinton Bush crime family, where they call each other family, where, you know, Barbara calls him uh, him son, uh, Bush calls him brother. I mean, it's just really sick. They've got foundations they money launder out of where they keep half the donations for their private jets. I mean, really a sick group of freaks here. Republicans love them because they're anti-gun, pro-abortion. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, mean, I guess they love it. Uh, that's our so-called Republican leadership. Uh, but there's got to be something going on there. Do you think he's just doing this for himself and attention? Or do you think he's working for Hillary? Oh, I think, uh, you know, you got to look when you look at Trump, you got to look at the ego. Uh, Trump has a, has a huge overly inflated ego. I think he's doing it for himself. Look, whether he's the nominee or not, and I don't think in the end he's going to be the nominee because, the you know, we know what the Bush family is capable of, even against a powerful and wealthy guy like Trump. Uh, remember, uh, Ross Perot dropped out of that 1992 race, which really killed him. Uh, he was running around 33% at one time. He was actually ahead of Clinton and George H.W. Bush in the polls because he cited uh, the Bush uh, uh, campaign was trying to uh, 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 hurt his daughter's wedding by putting lesbians in there. Uh, that, that was true. The Bushes were up to that. Well, let's talk about the dirty tricks I did against Perot to understand what's happening now. And he finally came out and said they're threatening to kill my family. He said, I'm done. America wants this. Fine, I'm out of here. And, of course, we know Perot's hooked in with the CIA big time, like antlers on a deer. I mean, it's redonkulous. We'll be back with Wayne Madsen. The ideology of the Bushes and of the Clintons is the same ideology of Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Ted Turner, the Queen of England, her husband, Prince Philip, her son, Prince Charles, 
Queen Beatrice of the Netherlands, her son, now the king. Go research any of these people. The Rothschilds, randomly. Just go research them, and they're funding eugenics. They're funding banning single-parent homes. They're funding abortion. They're funding open borders. They're funding taking your guns. They're funding not letting you have GMO labeling. They're involved with big banks laundering drugs and money, weapons deals. I don't care if it's Prince Bernhard or Prince Philip, any of them. I've investigated them all. I look at hundreds of news articles every day for 20-plus years. And their quotes, and, and you'll see ABC News. At the Rockefeller Institute, the, uh, royalty and others with the Rockefellers met secretly, and Oprah Winfrey was there to discuss overpopulation and world government. And it was even in the London Guardian, secret world government meeting. Uh, I mean, this stuff is crazy. And then they ship drugs in, and they have Hollywood movies act like there's money and sex and it's cool. And don't use drugs, kids. It's the D.A.R.E. program. They don't even tell the cops that are doing it that it doubles and triples drug use in kids. Don't use it. Here's the crack pipe. Here's the marijuana. Of course, in the school I went to in Rockwall, the cops involved in the anti-drug programs were then out dealing drugs. Most departments aren't like that, but it even gets that corrupt. You know, where the cops own the topless bars and run the whores and everything else. And then the public, Amnesty International came out and said legalized prostitution yesterday, and I agree with that. And it's not that I agree with prostitution overall. It's that making it illegal is done so the mafia and government can control it and keep it hidden to oppress women and others. All the major studies show you decriminalize drugs, you decriminalize the sex trade, it doesn't let the system sit there and then control it. It makes drug use, prostitution, all of it actually goes down when you legalize it. Portugal made narcotics legal. What was it, 15 years ago? And they've seen more than a half drop in crime. Yeah, people are out robbing to get their drug fix. You know, I'm ranting. We got Wayne Madsen, WayneMadsenReport.com joining us. I'm going to give the toll-free number out for your quick question or comment to Wayne Madsen. The toll-free number is 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. Wayne Madsen, investigative journalist for InfoWars.com. I've been bringing up a lot of the questions, a lot of the points here. I want to get more into... What you see happening with the attacks on Assad, saying take out Assad uh, so that we'll stop ISIS. I mean, that's crazy. I want to get into what's happening with China and the economy. But I know you're always working on a bunch of big stories. So you got the floor for the next 10 minutes or so. What's on Wayne Madsen's radar? Well, um, while everybody was focused, Alex, on this debate in Cleveland between the Republican, uh, the, you know, the kitty uh, kitty table team, that went on at happy hour and the adult team that went on later. I was in Chicago uh, investigating uh, the presidential election, not of 2016, but of 2020. And uh, the word is that Rahm Emanuel, the current mayor of Chicago, who just won re-election against uh, 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 Choi Garcia, uh, who uh, uh, actually beat, uh, almost beat him <laughs> Uh, in the uh, uh, first uh, election, and then he was forced into a runoff. He kept Rahm under 50 percent, forcing Rahm into a runoff. That uh, Rahm Emanuel is building up a political war chest to run for president in, in 2020. And uh, also, it, it's quite apparent why former Illinois Governor Rod Blagojevich received an, an, an unbelievable a uh, 14 year sentence in federal prison for uh, for allegedly trying to sell Obama's Senate seat. The reason for that is is that if Blagojevich, who actually the appeals court just shaved or took five uh, counts off of his uh, conviction, five charges were dropped. Yet the judge James Zagel refuses to uh, reduce. Blagojevich's sentence, this 14-year sentence, is is crazy uh, when you look at this supposed crime. Um, but this is the idea behind it. Uh, the 14 years would, of course, cover Obama's eight years in the presidency. 
in addition to Rahm Emanuel's eight years as mayor of Chicago, and if Rahm Emanuel is elected president in 2020, the first four years of the Rahm Emanuel presidency, Rod Blagojevich isn't due to be released until uh, the year 2025. Uh, and uh, that's because if he's released, we know he, he likes to talk. Part of the reasons he got got himself in trouble. He He's already, I understand, in prison. He's working at the prison library. He's connecting all the dots on who did this to him and other uh, politicians, especially in Illinois and Chicago. And if he's out, he's going to start squawking about Emmanuel. Now, let me tell you where Emmanuel's money is coming from. This was a bit of a surprise to me. I was talking to traders who work at the Chicago Board of Trade who spoke to me uh, anonymously because, let's face it, Emmanuel's running, running a thugocracy in Chicago. Uh, he makes Al Capone look like the fairy godmother. Uh, and uh, where Obama's getting his money from, Ari Emanuel, his super agent Hollywood uh, uh, brother, who is just as nasty and foul-mouthed as Rom, uh, invested up to $15 million in this rideshare company called Uber. Um, and the Chicago cabbies hate it because they spend as much as $425,000 for a cab medallion, and Uber is basically rendering that worthless. And um, David Plouffe, who was the architect of Obama's two presidential wins uh, in 08 and 12, uh, is the chief strategist for Uber. So we see what's happening. Uber is, uh, they hope to make at least, uh, uh, Ari Emanuel hopes to make at least a billion dollars on this. It's estimated it might make much more than that. But a lot of this money is going into the Rahm Emanuel coffers for his 2020 presidential campaign. And I think that should be uh, worrisome to all of us because Emmanuel uh, has basically screwed over the Chicago public school teachers. He's trying to uh, kill off public education in the city of Chicago. He's destroyed the daily machine single handedly, something that no other politician was able to do. And one can argue about machines, but the daily machine, uh, I, I believe, was more of a benevolent machine. Uh, than the malevolent uh, political machine that Emmanuel's running in Chicago, which is only benefiting the upper one percent, those who live on the uh, on the North Shore, those who are making money from the introduction of casinos in in Chicago, something that Blagojevich was opposed to. And um, you know who who are um, uh, Emmanuel's buddies? Well, it's the Pritzker family. Penny Pritzker is Obama's Commerce Secretary. The Zell family. Zell used to own. Uh, the Chicago Tribune, which we should remember once employed David Axelrod as one of its reporters, and um, and the Crown family, which is another one of these uh, wealthy Chicago oligarchs. Uh, so uh, this is what the, is being planned in Chicago, and um, you know, and unfortunately, the rest of the country isn't hearing about this because the good old days of the muckraking journalists like Mike Royko who worked for the Sun-Times and the Chicago Tribune and, uh, and Irv Kupsinet, uh and even the non-movie um, non, uh, critic um, uh, commentary of Gene Siskel and Roger Ebert, it's all long gone in Chicago. Uh, you know, the, the number one investigator for Chicago WBBM CBS2, her, her name is um, Pam Zekman, um, well, she was once married to James Zagel, the trial judge who put Blagojevich away for 14 years. So herein we see the uh, uh, nice little uh, uh, um, uh, circle of friends that are basically uh, helping Emmanuel seize control of the Oval Office in 2020. Why did they go after Blagojevich overall? I mean, didn't he come out of the same axle rod nest and they just basically saw him as a rival and he knew where the bodies were buried? Well, he, he he came out of the machine uh, 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 politics of Chicago, but his wife Patty, uh, her father, uh, his name uh, he was a, he was a, a like a thirty two year uh, alderman in uh, Chicago. He was a member of the Daily Machine uh, originally, but uh, uh, the the Blagojevich uh, Mel uh, dynasty broke with the Emanuel Axelrod crowd, and uh, Blagojevich, of course, was trying to ensure that the person who got Obama's 
uh, Senate seat with somebody more to Blagojevich's liking uh, and not, uh, you know, they at one time they wanted Valerie Jarrett to get that seat. That's the Obama people did. Uh, that, that's this sure. is. I want to go to some phone calls. Uh, shifting gears into ge geopolitical activities, I see a lot of admissions in the press that the West is launching yet another color revolution attempt to overthrow Russia like they've done Ukraine. Uh, we see the China situation uh, dropping their yawn uh, and uh, threats between uh, the West and China there. Uh, we see uh, stock markets in trouble. Uh, what's your take on that? Well, it's always been the ultimate intention of these color revolution fanatics, these neocons, um, who, who over, you know, basically overthrew uh, two governments in Ukraine in 2004 with the Orange Revolution. And again, uh, with the most recent overthrow of the Yanukovych government uh, uh, last year, uh, you know, they've, they've done it in Georgia, the Republic of Georgia. Uh, they've done it. Uh, they try to do it in Macedonia. They succeeded partially there. Victoria Newland, this is her, her thing. She's the Assistant Secretary of State for European and Eurasian Affairs. She works hand in glove with a lot of these neocon ambassadors in these countries to foment these revolutions. But the ultimate goal, whether you're talking, uh, you can talk about Ukraine and Moldova and, and Kyrgyzstan, the ultimate goal is Russia and China. Uh, that's that's the PNAC crowd's uh wet dream when it comes to these uh, color revolutions. Uh, they, they will end on the streets of Moscow and Beijing if they have their way. And they don't care whether they, they cause World War III to happen in the process or not. Because one thing we know about the neocons, these are ruthless people who do not worry about the, uh, the consequences of their actions. I, you know, I present uh, Iraq and Syria and the rise of ISIL as a um, as an example sure what do you make of jeb bush because that's a segue into this blaming obama and the clintons for iraq i mean of course obama and the clintons are all part of it they're guilty like he is but that's just asinine well he he wants you to uh, conveniently have amnesia when it comes to recent history uh, i mean there's a reason he he uses jeb as his um, campaign slogan he doesn't put bush on those buttons and those stickers because he don't want people <coughs> to remember uh, Bush. So it's, it's you know, basically he, he's an acronym followed by an exclamation. Sure, he's inverting reality again, just like yeah. he says, take out Assad to defeat ISIS when Assad's battling ISIS. Let's play a clip of Jeb Bush. We and our partners should declare a no-fly zone in Syria and then work to expand that zone to prevent more crimes by the regime. Enforce that no-fly zone, and we'll stop the regime's bombing raids that kill helpless citizens. It could also help stop Iranian flights from resupplying the regime and Hezbollah and other bad actors. A no-fly zone is a critical strategic step to cut off Assad, counter Iranian influence, keep the pressure on for a settlement, and prevent more needless death in a country that has seen so much of it. When we talk about no-fly zones in Syria, precision airstrikes in Iraq, or any projection of military power to meet or deter threats. All of this assumes that such power is there when we need it. Yet here as well, the short-sightedness of the present administration will leave a cost. We're in the seventh year of a significant dismantling of our own military, in almost inverse proportion to right, the threats enough. that are multiplying. Uh, I mean, Obama's following a pure neocon strategy. Uh, it, it's so clear. And they're, they're breaking Iraq in three pieces. It's a bipartisan plan. And then he sits up here and acts like Assad started it all when the ally of the Bushes, Saudi Arabia, quarterback this whole fiasco. I mean, it, it's just incredible. He's so creepy. I, I mean, he's so creepy and disingenuous and obviously a dirtbag. Uh, Wayne Madsen. Well, Jeb's pretty good at reading talking points from the American Enterprise Institute and the Washington Institute for Near East Policy both um, a notorious neocon think tanks. Uh, but uh, look, he talks about the regime. The regime we should be putting pressure on is the regime in Turkey, which is now pummeling Kurdish positions in Turkey and Iraq. The Kurds are fighting against ISIL. Assad is fighting against ISIL. Iranian uh, forces are fighting against ISIL. <clears throat> I'll give President Obama this, at least his, his opening uh, to Iran with the nuclear deal, he recognizes the fact if we're to uh, uh, 
press and defeat ISIL, we need Iran's cooperation. We have it now, but he wants to, I think, pretty much uh, formalize it. And, uh, and of course, he's got people in the Senate in his own party. For example, Charles Schumer, who's who's acting as Brutus with Julius Caesar in the forum, sticking a knife in President Obama's back. Sure. My view is it's all theater and they're going to double cross Iran and, and Iran's out of control as well. I mean, the whole situation is just insane. But uh, now Obama's saying he's going to bomb the... Uh, the, the Syrians when they attack the good rebels. We know there's really no good rebels. Wayne, we're going to come back with two short segments and take phone calls with you. Wayne Madsen, WayneMadsenReport.com. And we'll also talk to you off air about some of the uh, future uh, trips you're going to be on for InfoWars out there reporting around the U.S. and the world for us. We'll be back after this quick break. Uh, briefly, InfoWars.com is viewer and listener supported. We don't get up here like NPR that gets $400 million a year from taxpayers and then beg for money. We just sell, or MSNBC that gets stimulus money, billions of it, to give Rachel Maddow raises. We simply have high quality water filters that cut out the glyphosates and fluoride, the very best, lowest price, 10% off promo code WATER at checkout at InfoWarsStore.com. And we have amazing brain boosters like Brain Force that has two compounds that are key elements of the brain that are prescription in Europe of the 10 ingredients. You've heard the rave reviews. Go read the reviews for yourself at InfoWarsLife.com. Brain Force is back in supply. Super Male Vitality is back in supply at InfoWarsLife.com. Read the reviews there. It's simply, again, a whole bunch of concentrated known herbs and compounds to boost your normal vitality. I've lost so much weight, so much more stamina, so much more aggressive. I guess I am a jerk sometimes. Libido off the chart. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm Peter Cottontail. I'm here to tell you. Uh, Infowarslife.com or 888-253-3139er. And when you purchase these products, it helps me have a bigger platform to savagely, fearlessly attack the globalists. Sergey Lavrov, the super smart, super dangerous Russian foreign minister has come out and cursed the Saudis, calls them imbeciles. Translators say he called them expletive imbeciles. I mean, the Russians are really heating up right now because they're completely surrounded being attacked. Again, I'm not lionizing them, but it's a war crime to start wars with them when they're not expansionist. It's, it's just not in America's interest. This is not an American empire the neocons and, and the Obama-oids are building. It's a globalist bankster system that's parasitic. Now, we've got this short segment and the next to take calls for Wayne Madsen, and he's leaving us, and Mr. Dent's joining us in an in-depth analysis of the economy uh, and where he says this is going next. But it, now it looks it goes from probability to a serious probability of something bigger than two, 2008 and potentially way worse. So that's coming up in the next hour on your calls. Mike in Louisiana, thanks for calling. You're on the air with investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Yes, good day, good day. Hi, Wayne. Nice to speak to you again. Uh, this is Mike in New Orleans. I want to ask you this about it. You say that if it gets to a Bush-Clinton um, election. For one, I think there's a better chance we're going to have a revolution in this country before we see an election. We have an economic collapse coming. I can see riots, martial law. A break up That's why they're going to cause a race war to claim the collapse was that. But 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 I agree with you. They got some nasty stuff stirred up, Wayne. Oh, I, I you know if people are looking at yet another Bush versus Clinton election in 2016. I mean, we're you know it's like a yeah, pressure cooker. Uh, when does when does it go off? Uh, uh, what when does it meet uh, reach that point where people have had enough? They're so arrogant. This is so obviously fixed. People quit watching heavyweight boxing because Don King runs it. Right. I mean, yeah. The whole the whole thing is a charade. Uh, the one thing about Fox's um, so called debate that was more like a reality television show. That wasn't a debate. Uh, if we had real debates, let them bring back the League of Women Voters that used to uh, basically moderate those debates. Not somebody like Megyn Kelly, who's now in a some sort of big fight uh, with uh, Donald Trump. It's like oh, yeah, she's know, all tarting around. I'm so sick of yeah, it. It's, I mean, it's like Celebrity Apprentice. You know, he said she said this. He said that. 
uh, and that that business has no bi- uh, place in 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 our political system. But uh, but you know, uh, Fox uh, uh, saw a record audience for that, and they'll continue to uh, basically tarnish our political system with foolish deba- so called debates. Well, they're like turning, that. they're dumbing it down into bread and circuses by design. This has been done before. Uh, Stephen in Florida, you got a question or comment? Go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, two quick questions, uh, Wayne. First of all, you had done a bombshell article for InfoWars several years ago showing the deep ties Obama has with the CIA through his parents and grandparents. And Alex had put out a documentary uh, after Obama got in showing that there was uh, ties between uh, Bush and Kerry uh, through Hugh Hefner up there in Chicago uh, being blood brothers. So, first of all, is there ties? I've read stuff where Obama is actually related to the Bushes. Yeah, we know Obama is right? closely related to Dick Cheney. Uh, are there any relations between Obama and the Bushes? Not that I'm aware of. Look, uh, both Jeb and Obama, as I've reported, uh, uh, worked as assets at the very least for the CIA. Uh, but just because somebody works for the CIA or any of the other intelligence agencies doesn't mean uh, that they're totally uh, useless. Uh, I think Obama uh, in his opening to Iran is like Nixon going to China. Nixon had ties with the CIA also. That's right. And if you're a new listener, we just pulled up the Guardian, Bush and Obama cousins. We're not making this stuff up. I mean, when we say Prince Charles is the heir of Count Dracula, we're not making it up. I mean, you, truth is stranger than fiction. The more I learn, the more I realize that is the greatest cliche. It's totally true. Third hour coming up. Five more minutes Thank with Wayne Madsen. Then as they're completely surrounded, being attacked. Again, I'm not lionizing them, but it's a war crime to start wars with them when they're not expansionist. It's, it's just not in America's interest. This is not an American empire the neocons and, and the Obamaoids are building. It's a globalist bankster system that's parasitic. Now, we've got this short segment and the next to take calls for Wayne Madsen, and he's leaving us, then Mr. Dent's joining us in an in-depth analysis of the economy uh, and where he says this is going next. But it, now it, looks, it goes from probability to a serious probability of something bigger than two, 2008 and potentially way worse. So that's coming up in the next hour on your calls. Mike in Louisiana, thanks for calling. You're on the air with investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Yes, good day, good day. Hi, Wayne. Nice to speak to you again. Uh, this is Mike in New Orleans. I want to ask you this about, you say that if it gets to a Bush-Clinton um, election. For one, I would think there's a better chance we're going to have a revolution in this country before we see an election. We have an economic collapse coming. I can see riots, martial law, a breakup. That's why they're going to cause a race war to claim the collapse was that. But 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 I agree with you. They got some nasty stuff stirred up. Wayne? Oh, I, I you know, if people are looking at yet another Bush versus Clinton election in 2016, I mean, we're, you know, it's like a yeah, pressure cooker. Uh, when does when does it go off? Uh, uh, what, when does it meet uh, reach that point where people have had enough? They're so arrogant. This is so obviously fixed. People quit watching heavyweight boxing because Don King runs it. Right. I mean, yeah. The whole the whole thing is a charade. Uh, the one thing about Fox's um, so called debate that was more like a reality television show. That wasn't a debate. Uh, if we had real debates, let them bring back the League of Women Voters that used to uh, basically moderate those debates. Not somebody like Megyn Kelly, who's now in a some sort of big fight uh, with uh, Donald Trump. It's like oh, yeah, she's know, all tarting around. I'm so sick of yeah, it. I mean, it's like Celebrity Apprentice. You know, he said she said this. He said that. Uh, and that that business has no bi uh, place in, in in our political system. But uh, but, you know, uh, Fox. Uh, uh, saw a record audience for that, and they'll continue to uh, basically tarnish our political system with foolish deba so-called debates. Well, they're like turning, that. they're dumbing it down into bread and circuses by design. This has been done before. Uh, Stephen in Florida, you got a question or comment? Go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, two quick questions, uh, Wayne. First of all, you had done a bombshell article for Infowars several years ago, showing the deep ties Obama has with the CIA through his parents and grandparents. And Alex had put out a documentary uh, after Obama got in showing that there was uh, ties between uh, Bush and Kerry uh, 
through Hugh Hafner up there in Chicago and being blood brothers. So, first of all, is there ties? I've read stuff where Obama is actually related to the Bushes. Yeah, we know Obama is closely related to Dick Cheney. Uh, are there any relations between Obama and the Bushes? Not that I'm aware of. Look, uh, both Jeb and Obama, as I've reported, uh, uh, worked as assets at the very least for the CIA. Uh, but just because somebody works for the CIA or any of the other intelligence agencies doesn't mean uh, that they're totally uh, useless. Uh, I think Obama uh, in his opening to Iran is like Nixon going to China. Nixon had ties with the CIA also. That's right. And if you're a new listener, we just pulled up the Guardian, Bush and Obama cousins. We're not making this stuff up. I mean, when we say Prince Charles is the heir of Count Dracula, we're not making it up. I mean, you, truth is stranger than fiction. The more I learn, the more I realize that is the greatest cliche. It's totally true. Third hour coming up. Five more minutes with Wayne Madsen and Mr. Dent. Visit GCNlive.com today. Alex Jones here with a very important news alert for InfoWars listeners. We've confirmed through our major suppliers attempting to resupply Survival Shield X2 Deep Earth Crystals that elite corporations are buying up the supplies all over the world. So prices are going up and it's very hard to secure it. We have been able to secure a limited supply of the pure Deep Earth Crystals and have now been able to produce more Survival Shield Nascent Iodine X2. This is the good halogen. This is the opposite of the bad halogen like fluoride. Now we at InfoWarsLife.com are bringing you the only source of clean, pure, 99.99 ultra-pure deep earth crystals from more than 7,000 feet below the earth's surface. Watch the informational videos at InfoWarsLife.com to discover how transformational pure iodine can be for you and your family. Folks, this isn't hype. Read the reviews for yourself at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Going to your phone calls, we're going to go to Missouri now and talk to Alex. You're on the air with Wayne Madsen and Alex Jones. Alex, go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Welcome. How are you doing today, buddy? Good, my friend. Go ahead. Hey, uh, well, I just, first of all, I want to say, uh, my name's Alex Jones, too, man. <laughs> okay. Well, there are a lot of Alex Joneses, or, or are you a prank caller? No, no, I'm I'm for real, man. I, uh, I just wanted to say hello to my wife, Penelope, and my uh, daughter, Bethica, and my son. He's also named Alex. He's Alex Jr. But I got to tell you, man, I love everything you have to say. You are definitely one of my most, you're like my idol. I'm so excited to be on with you today, Alex. Okay, well, thank you. I'll have to say you don't sound too sincere, but uh, or 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 maybe you're so sincere you don't sound sincere, sweetheart. But but go ahead and uh, ask your question to Wayne Madsen. Okay, well, uh, what I was going to ask Mr. Madsen is how are we going to stop the Bushes and Clintons from getting in office as the American people? I mean, I think there's a revolution coming for sure. All right, that's a good question. Thank you very much. Very funny. Uh, go ahead, Wayne. Uh, we'll get some. Uh, Lemonade out of that lemon. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know, I, I, again, an, an informed elector, uh, electorate is uh, is uh, an anathema to uh, the Bushes and the Clintons. Um, the, the more people know about those two candidates and the more they know about the alternatives, I think the better off we are. Uh, look, there's a reason why uh, Bernie Sanders is catching fire over on the Democratic side and has now uh, gotten Hillary He's beating Hillary in the polls in New Hampshire, and um, and and Jeb. Uh, everyone thought his performance in Cleveland was very lackluster. So uh, even with all their money, it doesn't mean it's a foregone conclusion they're going to be the candidates. Although that's where the wise pundits—that's uh, sure. what they're saying. But uh, we know Hillary thought she was being coronated in 08. 
And a guy named Obama came along, and uh, that was the end of her dream. Well, she's there. reportedly got a lot of health problems, so, you know, the good Lord may have something to do with stopping her as well. These people are not God, even though they think they are. Jesse in California has got a question for you. Wayne, go ahead, Jesse. Hey, Alex. Um, uh, whatever happened, wasn't there another Bush brother, Neil Bush, and he was involved in the saving and loan scandal yes. back in the 80s? Yeah, there's a whole crew of them. <laughs> yeah, Neil. Alex. Neil. Neil was, uh, the, it was the Silverado SNL collapse. Uh, you know, when you look at where these bushes were placed, you had, you had W uh, placed in Texas to go on to the governorship, Jeb in Florida, who became governor. Of course, they both wanted, you know, one became president, the other one wants to. Uh, the two failures, of course, were Neil in Colorado, uh, plans to get him involved in uh, politics and become potentially governor of Colorado went down the drain with the Silverado SNL uh, collapse and Marvin Bush in Virginia, uh, the one we don't hear anything about, which I I investigated him years ago. You know, his maid was run over by her own SUV uh, and parked in front of his home uh, back when W was president. And I looked at that and uh, and J and Marvin Bush on the police report was actually listed as witness slash suspect in that death and. Uh, of course, the Washington Post didn't give it much attention, uh, but I, I looked into yep. it. She was actually, uh, when she was run over by her own car, she told Marvin that she was getting a videotape out of her car. And he said, oh, really? I let me see it. And that's when the car ran over her. So oh. that, that, to me, that's an un un still an unexplained death. But, you know, there's a lot of dead bodies uh, associated with the Bush clan. Well, we know one thing, they're not conservatives, and I don't know how any Republican out there could ever vote for them, and Hillary's a fascist dirtbag. I mean, I'm just so sick of these people, but we may just see the crown. Now they've got the Bush grandson elected here in Texas. I mean, it's like herpes or something. It just won't go away. It just keeps giving and giving and giving, very scrofulous. Thank you so much, Wayne Madsen. We're going to be talking to you today about some of these investigative reports. You're going to be doing on the road. So we'll be hearing a lot from you now that you've joined the InfoWars.com team. Thank you so much, Wayne Madsen. Thank you, Alex.